All right, I'm back here with part two. It's 306 cylinders. What I wanted to mention was, is when I showed you those bearings in part one, I meant to tell you, remember this machine shop, they bored this thing. So before I put the crank and all in it, I wanted to clean out all the orifices. Now I know that the machine shop has these little oil galley plugs out of it and they just take air and blow it out and water and wash it off they don't take no paint sticking with it unless they're going to build a short block for you those little holes down in there right down in here where i showed you where that hole was underneath that barrier they kind of look like it's right here and <clears throat> if any metal or anything's down in there as soon as the oil pump puts oil through the system that metal is going to make its way onto your bearings. And you don't want that because it will destroy the bearings, destroy the crank, could destroy the block. So here's what I do. You can go get these things at any pipe store, uh, tobacco store. Uh, any place that sells pipe tobacco and cleaning accessories. You can order them off the line, whatever. Get you some pipe cleaners. Put them together, twist them together. And clean those galleys out real good. Clean all the oil, I mean uh, all the metal, anything that's in there. Clean it out. You want that thing to be real clean. If you don't want to use pipe cleaners, you can use spray gun brushes. You know, like you clean a spray gun with. They got those on eBay for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. Um, j just take, and take the time to clean that out. And then take once you clean all that stuff out. Take you some brake cleaner, spray it out real good. Take your air nozzle, blow it out real good. Keep these these all these holes in here, especially like if they turn the crankshaft. Any little piece of metal that's down in there off of this crankshaft, get on that bearing. It'll ruin it instantly. It'll turn the crank up. Um, of course, this little motor here is it's going on a chipper, so it ain't gonna be able to turn. I mean, it ain't gonna it's governed. It ain't gonna turn, but about three thousand RPMs. But it don't matter. A motor that's turning a thousand will self destroy itself with one little particle on that bearing. It'll eat it up. Um, this motor has a thrust washer, a thrust bearing. It's on the side over here. This bearing. It's a funny looking bearing. If you rebuild your motor, you're gonna find that some of them are individual. You have to place them in the hole and then, but on like this one, like on a GM 5.7 small block, the old small blocks, it's on the rear. Just so happened this one's in the middle, kinda. But what it does is it keeps the crankshaft from going back and forth in this hole. Uh, it centers the crankshaft in here. Now, once you put your, put your assembly lube on there, if you can't turn this crankshaft really easy, put all these on there, put all, you know, get it all assembled. Take you a little spanner wrench like this right here with a socket. And you're gonna go back in two. Start in the middle and go out. Start in the middle and go out. And just snug those bolts up. And then turn that crank real easy. Now, if that crank don't turn easy there, it's not going to turn real easy at full torque. So right there is where you, if you have a problem and it don't want to turn, take it apart, find out why. Look at your boxes. Make sure if you ordered and you told them, if the machine shop told you that the crank was going to be a premium 1010 crank, you got standard 1010, 20, 30, you got 1020. And what I mean by that, the main bearings would be 10 and the rod bearings would be 20 or vice versa. If this was a 20,000th, that number right there would be 2, not 1, 0, which is 10,000th. Always look at your parts when they come in to make sure that they're right. If they're not, go ahead and send them back and say, hey, this ain't what I ordered. Um, don't try to put them in the motor. You'll ruin it. But when you get done, you should be able to take a, I, you know, you can take whatever. Uh, wrench you want to I always use the one you can turn it by hand but I always take me a little and keep up here and if you can turn that thing that easy I mean real easy no no you know you ain't got to put no pressure on it one finger you can see uh, 
if you can't turn it turn it crankshaft like that stop find out why because if it don't turn easy now it's never going to turn easy with a starter or there's something wrong interference somewhere all right when you go to torque these things down you go start in the middle and what i do is i go halfway between what it's supposed to be this one torques down at 70 uh, 70 75 um unless you're using arp i'm using the stock bolts and uh, so i'm torquing it down what the book says if you're using arps that's something totally different you're building you either had a problem with a bolt or, or you just want an arp bolt or stud which is great but not for what i'm doing here um you, you want to torque these things down. I torque it about halfway. So I went to 40. I went to every one of them. Middle. Then number two. Then number four. Then number, you know, uh, one. So on and so forth. Start in the middle. And go, you know, one back. One back from the middle. You know, back and forth. And <clears throat> they've got a torque sequence on this in the book. Which way you're supposed to go. Once you get done torquing these to 40, if you can't turn that crank, something's wrong. I'd rather torque it down to 40 and find out it's wrong, but you're going to be able to find it with that right there as soon as you snug it down with that in 90% of the time. But if you torque it down to 40 and it don't turn, it sure ain't going to turn at 70. So I, I tor torqued it to 40, then I torqued it uh to 70 but also there's a lot of people go well people tell me to put oil on the boats yeah i put a little bit of oil or grease on those boat threads and torque them down um, a lot of a lot of them say don't do that now a lot of your motors are torque to yield boats what that means is you torque this thing down to 25 then you're going to torque it to 40, and then you're going to torque it to uh, 90 degrees. If your directions say torque it down to a degree past whatever sequence, do not reuse these bolts. I highly recommend you use something, you use ARP studs in that case. Uh, don't reuse torque to yield bolts. If you find out that you got torque to yield bolts, Throw those bolts away and get new ones. Uh, I highly recommend in that case, throw those bolts away and run from them. Because torque yield bolts is stretching bolts. Anytime you get stretching metal, you get problems. Especially when they heat up. Uh, get you some ARP studs in that case. And uh, put on them. But these old motors, this is a 76 model. They didn't have that kind of technology around. That's a bad thing to me, but... A lot of people like them. I don't. <clears throat> um, but that's that's what I want to tell you. Clean it. Clean them. Keep your hands clean. You can wear gloves. I don't wear gloves. You can use. Go by the Waffle House somewhere. They'll give you some gloves over there. Give them two or three dollars. They'll give you a whole box. But uh, some of those little gloves, like a like a uh, cook with. Uh, I don't I don't use that. But but keep your hands clean. I keep a bucket of water and some. Uh, Dawn dishwashing liquid keep your hands clean when you're doing this stuff you, you the, the less dirt you can introduce into this thing right now the better off you're going to be from now on don't build it on the ground get you a motor stand get you some way to get this thing up on a table keep it clean one little piece of dirt ruin the whole ruin the whole process have any questions you can give me a call i'll make a, another couple of videos when i go to put the pistons in it and so on and so forth thank you